Let's talk about the Bible, specifically Genesis chapter 19. And there came two angels to Sodom, followed by a lot of words that can and have been misinterpreted throughout the years. Now, you can read it, but here's the gist. God sends male angels to town Sodom and Gomorrah to check if their citizens are really as wicked as rumored to be. Turns out they are, so much so that male Sodomites barged in the home of where the angels were staying and tried to rape them. Thus the word sodomy was born and has been endlessly used to define homosexual acts to be sinful, which many Bible scholars disagree with. They argue that the story of Sodom and Gomorrah alludes to sins like abusing strangers and being inhospitable. In fact, many point out hospitality is a key value in Christianity and is mentioned in many places in the Bible. Alluding that Sodom and Gomorrah is about homosexuality is mentioned in, well, nowhere else. But it may be a big deal in places where being gay means imprisonment, if you're lucky. In places like Uganda, being gay means that you live your life under the constant threat of being beaten by mobs, raped or even killed. The government even has an anti-homosexuality act, which has been nicknamed the Kill the Gays Bill. In a country where over 40% of the population is Catholic, a blessing from Pope Francis could be revolutionary. I would think if the Pope was here and is talking about love, um, compassion and equality for everyone, Ugandans will listen. That's Dr. Frank Mugisha, one of the most prominent advocates for LGBT rights in Uganda. And then he's very influential, and the Catholic um, faith is one of the most staunch, and also they listen to the Pope. So a message aimed at reaching the ordinary Catholic person and changing the mind of that person to view uh, gay and lesbian persons as any other Ugandan, and saying all the people, all the gay and lesbian people need is to be treated like any other children of God. So what does Pope Francis have to say about the LGBT community? Well, he stated pretty clearly his stance that marriage should be between a man and a woman, but has alluded some support to civil unions. Because while Pope Francis may not be pro-gay by typical standards, when asked directly on his opinion, he stated, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? We shouldn't marginalize people for this. They must be integrated into society. Who took me to the church? It's God. And I know he's the one who created me like that. Today, Pope Francis has not commented on the situation in Uganda. But for now, the LGBT community there still fights, still exists, still celebrates their pride, and even still attends mass with or without the Pope's blessing. Uganda isn't the only country struggling with LGBT issues. Click here to watch an episode on India's transgender community known as the Hijra. The Hijra are a unique group of people in India who don't identify as male or female. They've been a significant part of Indian culture for more than 4,000 years. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.